Britain was a pioneer of railway building. During the Industrial Revolution, the development of steam power made the railways a faster, more reliable and efficient way to move goods and people than the canal network. By the 1840s, the railway boom was well underway and many thousands of structures were built during the Victorian era. A national rail network was created, with most small towns and even villages having a station. Many larger towns and cities were connected by competing services, with several lines linking the same destinations. The network continued to grow until the early 20th century. At the start of the First World War, the railways were at their peak, with more than 23,000 miles of track and several thousand stations. By the 1930s, the age of the motor vehicle had arrived. The government had introduced the road fund tax in 1920 to raise money for improvements and new roads. By contrast, the railway network, which was expensive to operate and maintain, struggled to remain profitable. During the Second World War, the railways played a vital role in Britain's efforts. Yet, by the end of the war, the network was in a poor state of repair. And in 1948, the four main rail companies were united under public ownership as a single organisation called British Railways. Between 1948 and 1962, many unprofitable lines started to close, and it became apparent that parts of the rail network were no longer viable. Following a government review, the Beeching Report was published in 1963. This resulted in the closure of a third of the network in a bid to improve efficiency. That was around 6,000 miles of track and half of all stations. Over time, British Rail sold off many of these disused railway lines, stations, structures and land. Buildings were demolished or sold for housing, offices, farming or redevelopment, while cuttings and embankments were removed. This left behind a patchwork of often isolated structures, such as bridges and drainage culverts, which still needed to be maintained. In 2013, responsibility for maintaining the remainder of this historical railways estate, around 3,000 structures and other assets, was transferred to the Highways Agency, now National Highways. During the last decade, a growing interest in outdoor leisure pursuits and nature conservation has led to a change of thinking about these old structures, what they are used for and how to protect the wildlife that lives on and around them. National Highways specialist engineers are part of a dedicated historical railways estate team that manages the inspection and maintenance of the estate, repairing and strengthening structures to make sure they remain safe and are preserved for the future where possible. As custodians of the historical railways estate, National Highways also builds partnerships with the aim of repurposing viable structures, bringing them back into use. Since the year 2000, there's been around 1,500 miles of cycle path created and more than 100 heritage railway lines restored for passenger use. It's an exciting time, and the new life that redevelopment has breathed into these vintage structures is bringing real benefits for active travel and heritage. <laughs>